Hello, hello, I think we're live. I'll just sort out this window now, make sure everything works. I'll click on to the crossword from Friday. So I'm going to go full screen. Okay, let's see if I need to resize any windows. It's a bit smaller, doesn't it? Just a little bit, that'll do, I think. Right, we're definitely live. Hello, Dr. Jack. Nice to have you on board. In Germany, which part of Germany are you in? Just gonna move this laptop a little bit just so I can see a bit better. Excellent. Beside okay, the far north. So very cool. Hope you had a good weekend. I'm having a good weekend. Thanks for joining. I'll be starting this uh, shortly. I've literally just opened the window. I've just been resizing some windows. So I'll be starting this very soon. It was uh, quite a nice. Stephen, can you wait? Don't start answering questions yet. We haven't started. Um. Bear with me a second. Have a drink. I think everything is basically ready, I believe. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get things started. I think. So anyway, thanks if you're there. Thanks for joining. Feel free to say hi in the chat. And um, hopefully this will be as f much fun as it was last week. Uh, really good fun last week doing this. So um, hence I decided to do it again. So let's see how we get on. We'll start. Basically I'll go through it and I'll try and explain my thinking as I go through. Um, and if you have any questions about any of, the, any of the clues as we go through them, please just ask. And I'll try and explain what I'm doing. I'll do it sort of in a similar style that I do the the videos I do, um, the normal videos, if you've seen any of those, where I'll just clue by clue walk through trying to try and identify the definition of the wordplay and uh, and obviously solve it as well. Um Right, so let's let's get going then. We'll try let's start with one across. Um and yeah, feel free to obviously use the chat as much as you like. Um so one across, morality in the South End area. It's quite a UK specific clue, this one. Um, so you need to know, there's a place in the UK called South End. So what they've done, what the setter's done here is, um, you know, written South End as if you have it pronounced with a lisp. So it's, it should be an S here. So we're, we're looking for, I think when we're looking for morality, a word for morality, as if it was said from people, from someone who would pronounce South End as South End. Um, so I think this is, in South End, the other thing you need to know about South End, if you're not from the UK, is it, that it's in Essex. So if we say Essex like it's, uh, 
like it's um if you have a lisp then you would say ethics which gives us uh so that's ethics if you're from thigh fan and it gives us ethics meaning um morality nice okay we're off and running hello to all the new joiners i've got a few few viewers now and uh nice to have you on board feel free to say hi in the chat let me know where you're from and uh let's see if we can have some fun over the next well, it could be half an hour, it could be longer, who knows. Oh, hi, Daniela. Um, they don't, I don't, they, I'm not, it's not possible, let me just see. I don't think it's possible to put on word break indicators here. Um, no, I can only, it's not possible with this one, unfortunately. Someone else asked me that before in a previous video and unfortunately I wasn't able to do it. Um, hopefully it doesn't spoil your enjoyment. But um, nice to have you on board as well. There's two people from Germany this week. Last week we had two people from Derry. Um, okay, let's move on. We try four across. Uh, no formal title needed with uh, paper round or post. So what is happening here? No formal title title needed with paper round or post. Um, sometimes, you know, between, if you're new to Cryptic Crossword, I don't know if anyone's completely new, but uh, bear with me if you're not. Um, typical Cryptic Crossword clues have two clues within one. So you have a definition clue that's basically an indication of the answer, like some in some way, it, you know, the answer is that you could describe the answer in that way. Um, just like you would get in a normal crossword. And then you have another part of the clue that's more wordplay. And the wordplay can be made up of puns or, you know, hidden words or reversed words or all sorts of different types of wordplay. Um, and then a third part of the clue, sometimes you'll get our links, link words, or, which are words or, that happen between the wordplay and the definition. Um, and it could be in this case that or is a link here. So, you know, I'm thinking no formal title needed with paper round is giving me wordplay uh, feeling because um especially when it talks about with, it, it, it's saying maybe uh, one word with another word. Um, and round can mean um, like an O, or it can also mean something reversed as well, which makes me feel that post is probably the definition here. Um, oh, hello, County Armagh, hello, Bob. And hi, Arthur. And uh, the malicious synonym, I like that. Dr. Jack, that's a nice way of referring to it. <laughs> Definitely. Another word for the definition says Jack. Jack is a malicious synonym. Yeah, that, that, that could definitely be it. So here we're looking for a word for post. So no formal title needed with paper round. The other thing about the clues are, are that there should be no superfluous words. So every word should be used in some way. Um, uh, nothing's jumping out at me with this one. Um, no could literally just be no, N-O. Formal title, suppose that could be um, sir, maybe. And that's needed with paper round. Um, paper. Paper round. Well, pa paper, I've seen paper referred to, you know, in, in terms of the UK. I don't know if you talk everywhere else, but I've seen paper referred to as a rag before. Um sort of a common way of referring to a paper here. So it could be right, but I can't think of a word that's coming up there with that. Um, and then round. Well, if hang on. If round means backwards, then rag backwards would be gar. No title. Oh, hang on. I think the whole thing is reversed. So I think this is garrison. Like a post in an army um base potentially so we have if I, if I type it in we'll see if we have here's the rag i mentioned and then sir backwards let's write it backwards it would help yes and then no backwards as well well oh, this keyboard is not working today that gives us garrison so can you see can you see how that worked the wordplay there was this this aspect here and then um the post was the definition 
that's quite a tricky one. I think that's pretty tricky. No formal title, formal title needed with paper, and that's all round, as in it's all reversed. Um, hello, Hotspur Sam. Welcome back. Nice to have you back from last week as well. Right, we've got two clues down. Good. Let's see where we go next. Then nine across. Let's try. Um, and then I'll try some downs maybe. Carelessly yawn when swimming, suppressing bit of a laugh. Um, it's giving me anagram vibes. This like carelessly could be an anagram indicator. So, this could be the wordplay. It could mean a bit of a laugh, maybe carelessly yawn, maybe an anagram of yawn. When swimming, suppressing bit of a laugh. Hmm. Not hundred percent sure. Because carelessly is definitely an anagram indicator. I've seen swimming as an anagram indicator as well. Um. And well, another tip I always I give when you're looking at these clues is if you look at the words ending in ing in the middle, they tend to be indicating some sort of wordplay. So if if that's the case, then maybe if I read the clue more that it's an anagram of yawn. So yawn when swimming means an anagram of yawn. And suppressing a bit of a laugh. So maybe it's a word for a laugh, but with inside the anagram of yawn and the th it means carelessly but I can't actually think um, can't think that one no we'll move on we'll, we'll come we'll come back to it we'll try some of the one downs let's just try some of the downs since we have some starting letters and then see where we get to there um Barbara says, thanks for explaining one across. I don't think I could have solved this one. I live at really in Essex, about six miles from South <laughs> Yeah. If you had a list, I suppose, Arthur, you'd be right. You'd be straight in there. I used to work in Billericay for a while, actually. That was fun. Um, right. One down. Uh, notes yours truly sent over pains. All right. What, what am I thinking about this one? When when the clue refers to someone like yours truly or something like that, I think this is the compiler talking about himself. Um, so this is probably me. And and then we have sent over, which or yours truly sent over pain. So I think because we have the e here, I think is probably sent over is me backwards, me reversed. It's probably EM. So the clue I think means notes. And then we need to find a four letter word for pains over EM to mean notes. Um, what could that be? Hello, we've had some new joiners. Hello. Great to have you here. Feel free to say hi in the chat, please. Right, just distracting myself from because I have no idea what this is. E M Hmm Tricky, what could what could pains be? What I work for pains. Notes, it means notes. Hmm. Not sure. Oh, Hotspur Sam's got in there. Emails. Yes, of course. Thank you very much, Sam. It's emails. So we have ales is pains over me backwards. It gives us e gives us uh gives us notes. Thanks for that, Sam. All right, nice one. This is tricky. I'm getting that that this vibe of this crossword might be a tricky one today. Um, it is from Friday's Telegraph, which sometimes is tricky. Um, two down. Lo and behold, what horses eat? Flattened piggy, they say. What the hell? Right. Okay. Oh, Finley, thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming on to say hi. 
Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed the videos, by the way. So uh, there'll be some more coming this week, obviously. But uh, nice to have you here for a while, as long as you can be here. Right, this clue two down. This they say is letting me is giving me homophone um, vibes here. So as in, you know, the answer is going to sound like a word. It's going to sound like flattened piggy. I know. So I think that the 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 definition in this case is going to be lo and behold. And then that's put with what horses eat flattened piggy. They say three six. Um, I think what horses eat, what horses eat is hay. Flattened piggy. So this is going to sound like a word for flattened piggy. What could that be? <laughs> and the whole thing means lo and behold. Mm. Hey. Not sure. Not sure. Right, let's go to three down. Come on, we'll come back to two down. Um, put out guarantee on floor. That's black and white, 15 by 15. Nine and six. Right, I think I have this because pretty much every crossword puzzle is 15 by 15. So I think this answer is actually crossword puzzle. Um, I believe. Let's just check. Let's just check the wordplay and all that. Um, so we have put out is cross. If you're cross, you're put out. Guarantee is your word. Um, on floor, that's black and white puzzle. Yeah, I think that's right, isn't it? 15 by 15 is definitely, uh, definitely a crossword puzzle. They're usually 15 by 15 squares. Um, definitely fits. Yeah, I'm confident with that. That's quite a nice clue. So it's like the definition. It's like a, is that a cryptic definition? Not quite. Like a double definition, maybe? Not even that. It's just the definition is 15 by 15 is an example of it, which is a crossword puzzle. And then we have like a, a charade going on. That's what this is a question mark means an example of in this case. Um, cool. Right. Okay. Let's try five down. Express taken from center, dropping off date. All right. Okay. Thinking of wordplay wise here, then again, this dropping is giving me a wordplay feel to it. Um, and that we're probably. A word for center and we're taking off dropping off date so we're dropping off a word for date i don't know if date can be can that be um abbreviated to d maybe date of birth maybe date so i think this means express and taken here is that link um and we're getting it from a word for center it begins with a now there's a very, there's a word it's come up a couple of times. I think this this is what this is actually. This word is loved by I do the telegraph crossers mainly, and it comes up quite a few times. I find um, I mean state or express. So we had it, I don't know if we had it last week's uh, live or not. I remember talking about it in one of these videos, and this is aver. It's quite a sort of a term used a lot in in legal. In sort of settings, I think so. To to explain this one, we've got center. I mean, it's not strictly true to be honest, um, but it's taking center to mean average, and we're taking off date, which is age. I don't think of a center as average. I think that's the median, isn't it? Um, the average is not always a center, but unless you mean in some other way, how else can average mean center? Um, but I believe this is express. This is aver. I think that's where we got from this one. Cool. Okay. Uh, hello to anyone who's joined. Nice to have you on board. Like I say, feel free to say hi. Right. Six down. Some golf bore a bit bent. Sometimes when you see some, it means like a hidden word. 
but I don't think there's literally enough letters in this clue to be a hidden word. It would be five and ten. Um, so therefore, I can't really... I can't work out where the definition is here. Maybe the definition is bent. And then it's golf bow, or it could even be a bit bent is the definition. Um, so this is like a charade clue then. Some golf. And boar. Hmm. Some golf. Does he have a round? It could be round. I've got the R here. That would be golf. Would Some golf round. And a word for boar. And it means a bit bent. Round. I'm going to put round in just to see. We'll try 10 across in a minute and see if um, if we can make it work. But I think this definitely means boar. Um, what was Stephen saying there? There are a couple of different averages. Most people have a... Can't actually read that. An above average number of feet. Yeah, true. But I mean, strictly, I don't think average is a cent is center, is it? Um, right, okay, let's try seven. We'll try seven down and then we'll come back. Okay. Shower for villa is turned on and off. Right, where do you think the word plays and where do you think the, the um definition is? The little thing I look at sometimes is four, and usually everything after the four is is uh the definition, but that can't be the case here. Um because of this turned, I'm thinking we're having something reversed. Maybe it means shower. Is, t is turned for villa is turned on and off uh okay i think i got this so on and off in this case means um like alternate letters and is villa is turned but if we turn is villa if you look here maybe you can see it easier here if we turn is villa we get s and and look at alternative letters we get s a l v an O, which is a salvo, which would be a shower, wouldn't it? So a salvo is a shower, that's, that's a nice clue. Turn on and off, I haven't seen. Yeah, that's quite nice. That, that way of describing alternate letters is, is quite nice. And a shower is definitely a salvo. Um, right, let's try it down subtle details shown in lovely clothes subtle details shown in lovely clothes hmm is this like a double definition or not or lovely clothes maybe it's subtle details it's and that's shown in lovely clothes maybe a word for lovely clothes and that means subtle details Hmm. Not sure. Yeah, there's definitely a couple of tricky ones here. Let's try let's try ten across. USA or Russia? Question mark. It's about people. So here I think the definition is US, USA or Russia. Maybe it's a way of describing USA or Russia. It could be described as this because because just because of the question mark, I'm thinking. But this is the definition. And it's got from about people. Now about, I had a little short earlier in the week, it might have been yesterday maybe, where about can be a few different, can be coded a few ways. It can mean literally, you know, it's would be about a word for people. Um, or it can be, it can also be re, or it can be c, as in circa. So um, I think this is re, about, so it's, about is re, and then a word for people could be a republic. Yes, republic, nice, very good. Oh, Abdul, 
Abdul was in with the Republic already. Well done, Abdul. That's pretty good. So Republic. So it's a way. So the, the here the 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 um the question mark is just a, showing that USA and Russia are an example of this, and Republic is the answer. Um. Now Daniela is saying niceties. Oh yeah. Okay, I see it, Daniela. Nice ties. <laughs> so subtle details of the niceties. Showing in lovely clothes, nice ties. Very nice. Very good. Well done, Daniela. That's a, that's quite a nice clue. I like that one. Right, let's try 13 across. You've got every other letter here. Crafty, Cockney's drunk, or rolling with it? Right. When you see Cockney in a clue, it's definitely wordplay. And what it usually means is you've got a word and you're dropping the H. Because in, if you're not from the UK, Cockneys are people who are born in a certain part of London. And they talk in a certain way. They tend to, they tend to not really pronounce their H's. Um, so if you had a word like, um, like Harry, for example, if you're Cockney, you would pronounce it Ari. So basically, this is, this is going to be, a word where we've removed an H, somewhere. So, um, the fact that it says Cockney's drunk, I think it's probably a word for drunk. That's had the H taken away. Um, so I think this might mean crafty, you know. So a word for drunk are rolling with it. Because I'm, I'm seeing the T here, so I think it is here. An R rolling is maybe R backwards. So now we're looking, this is like adroit, doesn't it? That definitely means crafty. Now, add. So that's implying that had is a way a cockney would say drunk. Okay, let me think about that. I suppose, yeah, I'm thinking of drunk as in the adjective, you know, if you are drunk. But I suppose if you if you drank in, or drunk, drunk or drank is a past tense of drink. So if you drunk, you can say I went out last night and I had three pints. That means you drank three pints. I would say drank, but you can also say drunk, I think. So it's drunk as in the past tense of of um, to drink. And a Cockney saying had would actually say add. So adroit. That's nice. That's quite a cool, cool little clue there. Okay, well that it looks like round is definitely right then, isn't it? We're we're on to something here with round, I think. Um cool. Okay. Now Bob USA or Russia superpowers, yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I don't know. That's um it's definitely I'm a summer age. That's how I know them as well, but cool. Right, let's try well we try twelve across. High flyer with incentive to produce growth. Okay, now how I've read that is that the definition here is growth. And the reason I'm saying that is because we have with here. And that usually means you know, one word with another word will produce. So to produce is a, or link is a link here. So we need a word for high flyer and a word for incentive. So it's some sort of bird potentially here and then an incentive mm. it's not it's not jumping out at me either yeah I'm not sure um, let's try 15 across we'll move on we'll come back to that one Hoard old cash in place of buying and selling. Five, eight. Place of buying and selling. I think I've got this. I think this is stock exchange. So hoard would be stock. And then old cash, I suppose, is X change. It could be a way of uh, describing old cash, couldn't it? And a stock exchange is definitely a place of buying and selling. Happy with that. That's quite a nice, quite a nice one. Oh, hi, Connor. Welcome back. I know you were here last week. Um, 
had a few tricky clues so far. I don't know how, how if you've been watching from the beginning or not. But we're making a little bit of progress now. Let's try 14 down. I like it. I want to see an X in a clue. Was there Muscaday? Six enticing bottles on the counter. Wow. That's an interesting clue there. Was there Muscaday? Six enticing on the counter. What? I can't even see where the possible definition would be there. Six enticing. On the counter is making me feel like reversed. Something's reversed. Oh, hang on. There's an X here. I'll just let me do it here because there's an X here. I think this could be a lurker, like a hidden clue. I'm just going backwards here. I get going back seven letters. I'm getting existed. So the definition is actually was there or was existed. That's a nice clue. That's quite well hidden, I think. Bottles being the indicator of um, of the fact that it's a hidden word within within this. So the definition is was there. And then there's a hidden word in here. And on the counter means it was reversed. Nice. Cool. Right, well we try 18 across. 18 across push in reset or double flow in one's pipes five eight um what is this gonna mean push in push in reset or double flow in one's pipes it's a tricky one here. It's harder to see where the, I don't know what you think, but I think it's hard to see where the definition is and where the wordplay is. But mainly because of this "n" is everywhere. <laughs> you get push and reset, or, and then there's an "or" as well, and then you got flow in one's pipes. Ooh. Push in. Reset. Hmm. I'm not seeing that one either. What I can't even think what the def what's the definition? Push? No. Pipes. I'm not sure. Not sure. Let's try let's try ten do eleven down. They're hard to spot like ants in current squares. <laughs> That's hilarious. They're hard to spot like ants in current squares. So what does the question mark mean here? Sometimes it means absolutely nothing. Sometimes it means it's an example. So it's like ants and currents. So it might be something like ants are in current squares. They're hard to spot. Oh, I think I have this. I think this is amazing, this clue. So, they're hard to spot as the definition. It's a double definition, actually. I really, really like this one. So, look, they're hard to spot is the definition. And like ants in current squares is also the definition. Now, if you think back to the 14 down, that was a hidden word. Now, ants in current squares, I'll, I'll do it here, look, you can see. There's ants is actually in current squares. It's and it's a hidden word in current squares. But another word for hidden words in I think I said it even earlier is lurker. So I think this answer is lurkers. So ants within current squares is an example of a lurker, and they're hard to spot. Lurkers are hard to spot. That is a brilliant clue. I love that. That is so nice. How do they even come up with that? <laughs> oh, current squares. Nice. Very good. Right. Let's see where we go next. Um, we try... We tried 18 across. We'll we try 17 down and then see. Maybe it gives us some letters. Hi, if you've just joined the stream. Hello. Um, welcome to another live stream. It's the second one. We did one last week as well. 
Um, I would hope you're enjoying the watch along. And feel free to let me know where you're from and say hi. Um, 17 down. Found in market ELO's box set up on the shelf. Right. Having just done... Um, we've 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 done fourteen down, which was a lurker. And then we had eleven down, which actually, answer actually was a lurker. I think we've come across another lurker here. <laughs> um, so finding is giving me um, sort of hidden word uh, indicator. So, okay, Finley, see you later. Thanks for joining. Um, finding is giving me hidden words indicators here, and. Um, I think this, so the definition here is going to be on the shelf. And it's, it's a word hidden within a uh, market ELO's box. And it's set up as in it's reversed. And if you look inside here, we get obsolete, meaning on the shelf. Lovely. I think hidden words are my favorite ones, actually. I think they must be quite satisfying to, to actually come up with them, I think. Um, hi, Cinder Fellows Workshop. Nice to have you on board as well. I wouldn't definitely wouldn't call myself an expert, but I hope you're enjoying this one. Um, right. We try 20 across. Let's go. Express feelings of love before marital contract. No, Romeo. Okay, where do you think the wordplay is here? And where do you think the definition is? Um, when you see no, Romeo, Romeo is very often abbreviated to an R, you know, from the alphabet, alpha, alpha beta, etc etc so and we see also um also we have love love is of of very often coded as an o as an in tennis zero in tennis um oh thank you for the typo thanks dr jack um so O is very often coded, um, or love is often coded as an O. So I think this means express feelings. So we got love before marital contract, no Romeo. Now what's another word for a marital contract? It's a prenup. And if we take out the R of prenup, we end up with pen up, giving us open up to express your feelings. Um, you asked quite a nice clue as well. Thank you. Thanks, Big Jim. Thanks for the feedback. That's uh, nice to hear. Yeah, I only started this about a month ago, so I've just um, just been gradually growing and doing. I like doing the shorts as well. I t keep trying to think of find trying to find clues so I can show you a different example of what can happen in a cryptic crossword clue. So if you don't know, I do a series of shorts as well. Um, I do try and do a clue every day, um, which sometimes gets in the way of my my real life. <laughs> I just find time to do these clues. But I'm glad you're enjoying them. Um, and well done, Sam. You got the open up there. Great. Right. Well, we go back to... Let's go back to 18 across. We got a, the starting letter there now. Push in reset or double flow in one's pipes. So it could be... I mean, let's, let's pretend it's the definition of this end. If it's push... In reset, maybe there's a word for push inside a word for reset or double mm. flow in one's pipes. One of a push is press. I'm just seeing the letters here. Maybe press is here, you know. Actually, I think, I'd, you know what? I think I might have this. This is blood pressure. I think it's blood pressure. Now, that's the flow in your pipes, isn't it? Is your blood pressure. If you think of pipes as veins. So we got press inside blood and sure. Now, why is blood, why is that? He said. Reset or double. I think there's an anagram here, isn't there? So we could push the press. 
Oh yeah, look, it's an anagram of R double. So reset was actually a, a, an anagram indicator there. That's um, I haven't seen reset as an anagram indicator. I suppose if you reset or double, then and put push put press inside that, you get uh, you get blood pressure. Cool, that's a cool one. Like that clue, and uh, well done, Connor, for spotting that one as well. That's, that was quite difficult, I think that one. Right, let's try twenty four across. Um, twenty countries with one brand of bread. So, is this going to mean? I can't see. I can't see major wordplay here. I think this might be like a cryptic definition. Twenty countries with one brand of bread. I've seen. I've seen that uh, bread. You know, when you talk about bread, it's very often not really bread. They're talking about. They're usually it's just it's a word for for money. Um. In twenty countries. Yeah, I think this is Eurozone. Nice. Oh, everyone's jumping in there with Eurozone. Fantastic. I suppose we have some people actually in the Eurozone watching this as well. <laughs> well done, everyone. There's 20 countries in the Eurozone. Very well done. So that's a cryptic definition there. So it's not actually, a, it's not a, there's, there's the, whole, the whole sentence is a definition. There's no, no wordplay there. Cool. Okay, what's this one? 21 down. One naturally white laments going nude. Okay, so what's giving me wordplay vibes here is this. Laments going nude. So going nude, I think, would mean a word for laments minus the outside letters. The first and last letter. And it's going to mean one naturally white. So I'm, I'm just looking at what we got here. Now, a word for laments is regrets. And if we take off the R and the, if we take off the R, and the S of regrets, we get egret, which is a white birdie type. It's a bird, isn't it? It's a white bird. I think they're typically white anyway. Um, so it's, that's the that's the um one naturally white. So you can see that definition. You wouldn't necessarily find that in the dictionary. Um, it's more of an indication, or as. As we were told before, a malicious synonym, which I like that. Cool. Okay, where will we go next? Um, will we try? Let's try 26 across. A peel of swallow nesting in porch. So here we have that, you know, if you're new, like I say, look at these words in the middle of the sentence especially ending in ing, they tend to describe the wordplay, like what's happening. So if you, if you treat it that way, then you look at, this is swallow nesting in porch. So a word for swallow is within a word for porch, which means the the word, the definition will be appeal. Um, appeal. What could that be? Word for swallow. To eat. Eat. Yeah, let's eat. Because this, look, if we put eat here, where are we put in? If we put eat here, I think I have this. I'm just teasing it out a bit. So we get entreaty, which is to appeal and entreaty. So we see the word for porch is entry. And within entry, we have eat, giving us entreaty. Nice. Right, 23 down. Good. Well done, Big Jim. You're flying here. Right. Creature with flipping bite. <clears throat> So what do you think is happening? I think flipping is an indicator of wordplay here. So I think we have a, the definition is a creature and we have a word for bite that we've flipped and it's going to make, it's going to um, mean creature. Um, so yeah, yes, Big Jim. So 
Big Jim reckons Tang, so Tang backwards is Nat, giving us Creature. Cool. Very nice. Very nice. Right, let's look. Six down is staring at me here. I really want to try and get six down. Some golf bore a bit bent. So we got round. Ah, uh, I think I have this now. <laughs> I get accused of being this quite often. It's round shouldered. So if, you, if you've borne something, you know, if you bear something in the past, you shouldered it, didn't you? And a round of golf. Some golf is a round and then bore is shouldered. And the whole thing means a bit bent. Cool. Very good. Right then. Um, will we try... Let's go 16. 16 down. Um, Enid's scene to undergo revision in desire for acceptance. Okay. this I think this is a first sort of obvious uh, anagram that we have here. Um, the reason I'm saying that is that we've got to undergo revision has given me anagram indicator and we have a, um, so I think it's an anagram of Enid's scene and it means desire for acceptance. So the wordplay was at the beginning here and the uh, desire for acceptance is, an anagram of Eden's scene is neediness, isn't it? Nice. Very good. Yes, Abdul. Well then. Right, we just have the two, two opposite corners to do. Um, right, 22 across looks doable now, doesn't it? Uh, target dates father with some angling gear investing energy. Right. Sometimes, like, within a clue you get this apostrophe S and very often it's a link between the definition and the wordplay. So if I'm, if I'm right, I think the definition will be target date. And then the wordplay is father with some angling gear, investing energy. So what would that mean? A word for father with ooh, maybe a word for angling gear. Investing energy means there's an, probably energy is probably being, um, abbreviated to an E. So I think this is a target date is a deadline. Yeah, deadline. So we have dad with an E in it and then line is um, some some angling gear in it, line. Cool, very good. I'll see you all, Big Jim and Abdo are in there. Well done. We got that one. Right. 25 across. More than one common healthy food. Uh... Oh, I think I have this. This is quite a nice clue. So this is um, like a double definition. It's more than one common and healthy food. So this is going to be like another word for a common. If you think of um healing common or, you know, is is a field, like it's a green. So more than one of them is greens and greens are healthy food. You should always eat your greens, shouldn't you? That's what I've been told. Cool. That's quite nice. Uh, 27 across. Funny boy, certain to succeed, 4-2. Something certain to succeed. I think I've got this. This is odds on. As in, in, as in betting. So why would it be funny boy? It's basically odds on. So again, that's a double, a double definition. So we got an odds on. Could be a way of describing funny boy and also certain to succeed. Nice. Okay, 19 down. Thought senor Senora, I would say Senora, but we'll go with Senora should translate. I think this is another anagram. So we've got an anagram of Senora because should translate is the anagram indicator here. Um so that means thought is the ant is the actual definition. Um, an anagram of Sen Sonora is reason. Yeah. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Um, 
Well, we're doing we're doing well here. Right, we've just got those ones where we get stuck on at the beginning to, to have a go at now. Um, let's try two down because we have an O at the end as well. This is a fun, funky one. Lo and behold, what horses eat? Flattened piggy, they say. Right, this is a homophone. We agreed. Um, lo and behold, what horses eat? I think horses eat hay. Okay, I think. So lo and behold, so this is, is the definition. This is hay presto. I would guess now. So it's a homophone of hay. And then it's also a homophone of flattened piggy. So I suppose flattened is pressed. And piggy, in other words, for your toes, if, you know, this little piggy went to market, etc., etc., is a toe, isn't it? So a pressed toe. Hey, presto. Lo and behold. Wow. Hey, presto. We got that clue. That was nice. That was quite cool. That's quite a cool. I like the homophone ones as well. I like the hidden words in homophones. <laughs> um, right, let's try nine across now. And a few of you got it as well. Nice one, Bob and Connor and Abdul. Nine across, carelessly yawn when swimming, suppressing a bit of a laugh. Now, I thought initially this was definitely an anagram of yawn. So, if it is an anagram of yawn around a bit of a laugh, then we'd have, this would have to be, maybe any. Okay, this is anyhow. So we got the anagram of yawn here, around a bit of a laugh as a ho, 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 as Santa would say. Um, given us anyhow. Right, the last clue. High flyer with incentive to produce growth. So looking at this the first time round, I think it's a it's a word for a bird, and a word for incentive. So a four letter word. I think this is lark, isn't it? Lark to produce growth. This is another one of those blinking plants again. I really do need to improve my plant knowledge. I think because I think this is growth as in. It must be a name of a plant. So Bob, oh Bob's got lark spur. Oh yeah, spur is an incentive. You need a bit of a spur. Yes, well done. Um, yeah. So high flyers a lark. Let's go back to that one. Where is it? Thirteen? No, twelve. High flyers a lark. Incentives the spur. The whole thing means larkspur, so it's some sort of plant, another plant that I don't know the name of. I think we had last, was it last week we had uh, Tradus scantia, and then another one we had, uh, what was a Sweet William I think I had as well. It's one of the clues earlier. So I'm learning these plant names, but I'm learning them on the fly here. So well done to Bob, and Big Jim got spur there. Um. So is it Connors is blue planty? So is it, it's a blue plant then, is it? Um, cool. Okay. Well, we got we got to the end. I think that was a pretty tricky crossword. Actually, that was much harder than last week's. I feel. Um, absolutely love this clue. Eleven down, the lurkers. I thought that was amazing. Um, I don't know what were your favorite clues in there? Uh, blow pressure is a pretty cool one as well. It's quite funny. Blow in one's pipes. Uh, hey, Abdul, thanks. Thanks a million. Glad to hear. Glad to hear that. It's like we have some use. Um, it's quite a, it's quite a slightly stressful trying to do these live, but it's quite, a, it's quite a, give me a bit of a buzz on a, on a Sunday evening, I have to say. <laughs> and it's great to have your help as well, actually, along the way. I think we're all learning a bit. Uh, Larkspur. Very good. Um, yeah, no, that was that was great fun. Um, yeah, I'm really, really enjoying doing this. So, you know, I will try and keep it going. 
Um, I think this time on a Sunday is quite a nice time to do it as well. Uh, just putting off thinking about the rest of the week, but um, I'll try and do it again if I'm if I'm around and if I'm not you know, if I'm not anywhere for the weekend, I'll definitely try and make this a a weekly thing. Um, yeah, Abdul, did you watch the football? Did you? Are you a commentary fan? Because I'm a Man United fan, and that was very stressful. I don't think we deserved to win. Actually, I was actually I was cheering for commentary at the end. <laughs> um, so yeah, brilliant. Well, thanks, thanks everyone. Thanks Sam and um, Daniela as well. Nice to have you have you here. Um, oh, you're an, you're a Man United fan as well, Abdul. Yeah, well, it was painful today, wasn't it? Um, but yeah, that was. I agree, Arthur. I think that was a tricky. That was a tricky puzzle. That's one of the hardest ones I've I've done. I'd say. Um, so that was good. Like, like I say, I've been doing these things for probably every day now for about four or five years. Probably seriously since about lockdown happened. But um, haven't quite uh, gone taking the plunge on the old times yet because that looks they they look they're like another level aren't they but this was pretty hard i think this 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 this, uh, this one but um yeah look it was great great to have you here um I'm, I'm thinking of doing i don't know if anyone would be interested in this maybe you can message me um afterwards but i was thinking of doing like i don't know if you watched any of my normal videos like, like just where i do a solve on my own here um but i was thinking of doing maybe a video where I maybe f do some sort of video call with somebody who's maybe trying to learn cryptic crosswords a bit and we do one of these together. So they, they do it and when they get a little bit stuck or whatever, then I can try and push them in a direction and see see how they get on. Um, I think that'd be quite fun to do. So, if, you know, it'd be a good one to do live in person, but uh, probably more practical to do it as a video call, I think. Um so if anyone would be up for that, then we could try and work out a time to do it. That would be good fun, I think. Um, so let me know. If um, I'm trying to think how you could t let me know. Um, well, let me know in the comments if that could be something you'd be interested in. And then I'll try and work out a way that you can... Maybe I'll put an email. I have an email address that I set up when I started this thing. I'll have a look for that, actually. I'll just put that on here. Will I? Let's do that. Um... I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put the email address in the description or on my channel. So if if you're up for uh, if you're up for maybe being the guinea pig in that in that scenario where you work we work through a puzzle together, that would be great fun. I think. Cool. Okay. Well, that's that, that's it. I think for for another live stream. Thanks a million for everyone who joined, and uh, it's great to. Great to have you on board and, and sitting alongside me as as we attempt to do these things. That was that was really good fun. I'm glad uh, you seem to have enjoyed it as well. And uh, I'll be back for more um, this time next week. All being well, I'll put a post up sometime during the week if I'm definitely going to do it. And then we can uh, hopefully see you all again next next week. Okay. If if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel and then you get notified of as and when I, I put more things on. And uh, keep an eye out for the for the uh for the shorts as well great okay oh connor cool well connor well I'll, I'll put an email somewhere i'll put an email in my channel description i think there's a way of putting something in there where you can potentially email me and then we can have a chat about this after afterwards good all right bob thank you yeah aver they love aver in this in this uh in this in this crossword i've seen it a few times now it's it got me stuck the first time i saw it and now i've it's i think it's happened two or three times since so um brilliant okay well look thank you very much i will i think i'll end it there and uh i'll see you again next week in the meantime thanks again for joining see you soon all right thank you bye bye